Lesson data everyone. Today we are going to discuss module 1, unit 3 for the subject CE 2221. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss curvilinear motion of particles. In this video, we will only be discussing the concepts. So start off, we define curvilinear motion as a motion that would occur when particles are moving along a curve. And usually, this curvilinear motion would happen in two or three dimensions. So for two dimensions, we call it planar motion. And for three dimensions, it's simply a 3D motion. So in curvilinear motion, you have what we call your plane curvilinear motion, or also called as the rectangular coordinate motion, in which we define our motion in terms of x and y. Or we could have this also in terms of y, z, x, z, or x, y, z. So this is also referred to as Cartesian coordinate. All motions now. In a plain curvilinear motion, we'll have two points, which are directly expressible in terms of the horizontal or x and the vertical or y coordinate system. So you can see from the figure, so from the origin, the particle now can be defined through its position along the x axis and its position along the y axis and as well from here we could also define the motion of the particle its velocity and acceleration based on its x and y positions so for plane curvilinear motion given now your x and y axis let's say we have here particle a in our plane which will move along this path. So the distance now from the point of origin or our reference point to the position of A or to point A is what we call your R or the position of a particle at any instant. So if my object or my particle is at this point, then the distance between this point and my reference will also be R depending on the time. Okay? So R basically changes depending on the time it has traveled. So with respect now to our unit vectors, I and G, our position or vector position can now be written as X, I plus y g so if our particle now moves along our path for a certain time and reaches a final position let's say b the distance now between this point and the point of origin is what we call your r final and the first position is our r initial okay so r final now will also be defined as xi plus yg final. And then the difference between our r initial and r final is what we call your theta r, which is simply the displacement of our particle along our path. Okay? Take note that for this distance along the curved path of our motion is what we call your S total or the linear distance or arc distance that is traveled by of the particle along the path or our trajectory. So again, S total is different from our delta R. So, 
The next concept of motion we, that we know of is the velocity, which is defined as the time rate of change of position. So, for curvilinear motion, the velocity is always tangent to the path of the curve. So, if we have here the path followed by your particles, so at this point, its velocity will be tangent at this point. And as it moves, the velocity will vary for the direction of our velocity will vary depending on its position. But it will always be tangent to the path of the curve. Okay, so as you can see, all of the velocities at each point are all tangent to the curve. So given now our previous diagram, which shows us R initial, R final, and delta R. So from point 1 to point 2, particle travels at a certain time. So we could write now that for VI and VF, that can now simply be written as the derivative of your Position vector with respect to time. So V is equal to the derivative of R over dt is equal to R with a dot above. So this symbol would simply indicate that V is the first derivative of R. Okay? So from calculus, we know already that V is equal to D R. So we have defined is xi plus yj all over dt. And this will now result to x i plus the first derivative of y g. So, paano nangyari ito? So, applying now multiplicative rule for, for the product rule for derivatives. So, d start off first with the xi so d of x with respect to time times the variable i so plus derivative of the second term with respect to time times x so next we have the derivative of yg so we will have d y respect to time times g plus derivative of g with respect to time times y. So take note that for bi over dt is equal to 0, dg over dt is also 0. These are our unit vectors. So we'll now arrive at dx over dt i plus dy over dt g, wherein dx over dt is your first derivative of x, and for dy dt is your first derivative of y. That's why we were able to arrive at the equation x dot i plus y g okay. or since dx over dt is also our velocity and dy over dt is our velocity along your y direction or y axis we could also write our velocity as vx i plus vy g so take note that i and j are only our unit vectors. Okay? So this is for our equation of your instant tenuous velocity. Okay? And then for our average velocity, we already know that the average velocity 
is computed by the equation delta r all over delta t. Or ito yung nasanay tayo na equal to delta b divided by delta t. Or this is the same as your delta s divided by delta t. So change in position divided by the change in time. So whichever variable you want to use as long as you know that r is for position, d is for position, s is for position, it's okay. Okay? So aside from the position vector and the velocity vector or position and velocity, motion could also be defined through its acceleration. So as we have learned, acceleration is simply defined as the time rate of change of the velocity. So, in plane curvilinear or curvilinear motion, acceleration now is not tangent to the path of the curve. But this one now will be defined by the x and y component of the accelerations. So, basically, yung acceleration, hindi siya tangent din sa path of curve, pero tangent siya doon sa parang graph natin. Okay? So, for acceleration now, so given Again, our pre previous diagram. So we have our path, which is uh, the position of the particle at two times will be defined by R1 and R2. So the displacement is simply delta R. And then for the acceleration, this will now be defined by your ay and ax. So by Pythagorean theorem, we'll now be able to arrive to our value of the acceleration. So unlike sa velocity, which is tangent to the path or the trajectory, a now will be changing based on the values of its x and y components. So for Curvilinear motion, the acceleration now, as we have learned, is equal to the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Or we could write that simply as v with a dot above. So it means it's the first derivative of velocity. Or this could be written also as the second derivative of our position vector r. Okay? So writing this, we now have a is equal to the derivative of velocity, which is vi plus vj with respect to time. Or expanding this, we now have vi plus vj, wherein v is the first derivative of the velocity. Or this could also be written as xi plus yj, in which x and y are the second derivatives of the x and y components of the position. So we could also write this now as a is equal to axi plus ayj. So take note that ij again are just our unit vectors. So for our average velocity, that's simply equivalent to the change in the velocity divided by the change in time. Okay, so no, nothing new for our equations. So almost the same lang yung ating analysis when we talk about curvilinear motion and rectilinear motion. So dito lang sa plane curvilinear motion where in the applying our x and y components, we are just analyzing the motion of the particle in a curved path through two analysis of two different rectilinear motions. So it's either x and y, y, z, or x, z. Okay? So, in addition to plane curvilinear motion, let us be reminded that when the magnitude and direction of the particle is constant, then the time derivatives of the unit vectors i, j, k will be equal to zero. So, that's why we'll have now for our equations, v squared is equal to the x component of the velocity squared plus the y component of the velocity squared. Same for our acceleration, it would also be a squared equal to ax squared plus ay squared. And 
the tangent of theta, which will define the direction of our velocity and our acceleration will be taken now as the ratio between dy and dx. Okay. So for three-dimensional motion, curvilinear motion, so if we are dealing now in 3, 3D for x, y, z coordinates, we will have almost the same equations for our position, velocity, and acceleration. What will only happen is that for the position, so we have x, i, plus y, j, okay, if this is two-dimensional, magdadagdag lang tayo ng z, k. So z is the position of the particle along the z-axis, k is our unit vector. Okay? And then for v, which is vxi plus vyj for two-dimensional, so we'll just add vzk for the z-coordinate. And then for a, same, we'll have axi plus ayj plus azk. So kung two dimensions lang, wala yung k values or yung z values, Pag three dimensions, we now include the z values. And then, for the magnitude of our factors or definitions of motion, it will simply be defined by Pythagorean theorem. So, for position, that's simply equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So, on three-dimensional. Kung two-dimensional, that's simply x squared plus y squared. Then, for v, that's equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared plus vc squared. And then, for a, that's square root of ax squared plus ay squared plus az squared. So, ito, nanggaling lang siya dito. Okay? Then, for our direction, using our unit vectors, that will, this will be defined by the unit vector of R is equal to the position vector divided by the magnitude of the position vector. So, ito. Okay. So, UV, the unit vector for the velocity is equal to the velocity vector divided by its magnitude. Unit vector of A is equal to the acceleration vector divided by the magnitude of A. Okay? So, important reminder for curvilinear motion or plane curvilinear motion. Uh, for curvilinear motion, take note that they can cause now a change in both the magnitude and direction of motion. Also, the velocity vector, as we have said, is always tangent to the path. And that acceleration is not tangent to the path, but is tangent to the way we map our curve or our acceleration graph. And then, if the motion is described using rectangular coordinates, the components along each axis will not change direction, but only in the magnitude and sign. So, for our analysis of curvilinear motion, specifically for rectangular coordinates, the motion along each axis will be found using our rectilinear motion equations. We have for velocity that is ds over dt or the derivative of the position with respect to time and acceleration equal to the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Then for cases where motion is not expressed as a function of time, we will now be using chain rule so we have the ads is equal to v d v. So we'll be having some examples with this one. Okay. So for two dimensions, given now y as a function of x can be used to relate the values of x and y components, and v and a will be solved through chain rule from calculus. So once components of V and A are determined, the magnitudes now can be solved through Pythagorean theorem and the coordinates of the direction angles can be taken from their components through their unit vectors. So under plane curvilinear motion, 
we have what we call the projectile motion or motion of a projectile. So this is the most common application of curvilinear motion, specifically in two dimensions, that is often analyzed or solved in terms of the rectangular coordinates. So usually x and y coordinate. Okay? So the motion in the x direction usually or will not affect the motion in the y direction. So vice versa, the y direction will not also affect the motion in the x direction. So they are independent of each other. So from physics, as a review, projectile motion neglects air resistance. Thus, along the y-axis, it experiences free-falling motion. So it is solely affected by its weight, thus causing a constant downward acceleration, which we call g, and that is equal now to 9.81 meters per second squared, or 32 feet per second squared. So for our projectile motion, so it's a curvilinear motion, follows a parabolic curve, parabolic path, and as you can see, our velocity is tangent to the curve, and it changes based on the time. So x and y components of the V changes as it travels our so for parabolic or for projectile motion this curvilinear or parabolic curve now is what we call the trajectory okay. so for projectile motion this is just a review from physics the displacement now or the motion is defined by its displacement velocity and acceleration and since it's moving in two dimensions x and y so we could now divide our analysis into the horizontal and vertical motion of the projectile so for displacement horizontal displacement is in terms of the range or r and the vertical is defined by its fall or y for the velocity horizontal it is always constant since there is no other factor that would affect our motion. And because the Vx is constant, therefore the acceleration along x is equal to 0. And for the vertical velocity, that is now a varying value. Thus, our acceleration is under free fall. So, Ay now is a constant g. So, remember, for or whenever an object reaches its maximum point, our vertical velocity will be equal to zero. And then, but our horizontal V will still be the same. So Vx is constant at any point in our trajectory. So Ay is equal to G, which is negative 9.81 or negative 30. So for our equations for projectile motion, for horizontal motion, Vx is equal to Rt, wherein R is equal now to Xf minus Xi, or we could also solve Xf equal to Xi plus Vxt. So this is simply from our kinematic or basic kinematic equations. And then for the vertical motion, we have Y can be computed as the average of the velocities times the time travel. Then we also have your VFY is equal to VIY plus GT. Or VF squared equal to VI squared plus 2GY. And Y is equal to VIYT plus 1 half GT squared. So this is not new to you already. You're already familiar with this. Okay. So for the vertical motion, this will now come from your free fall equations. So for our velocity, we'll have its Vx and Vy, and the velocity will usually be defined by the angle theta measured from the horizontal. So from this figure, we can now write that Vx is equal to V cosine of theta, Vy is equal to V sine of theta, and the total velocity is equivalent to the square root of the Vx squared plus Vy squared. 
and tangent for theta is equal to the arc tangent of by over dx. So take note for our sign conventions, vy is positive if it's going up, vy is negative if the particle is going down, and y is positive if our particle is above the starting point, and y is negative if it is found below the starting point or your initial position. And then again, g is always a negative value. So to understand now the concepts of curvilinear motion of particles, let us try to solve some examples. Example number one, at any instant, the horizontal position of the weather balloon in the figure is defined by x is equal to 3t, where x is in meters and t is in seconds. If the equation of the path, this blue line, is equal now to or is defined by y equal to x squared over 10, determine the magnitude and direction of the velocity and the acceleration at time equal to 2 seconds. So for our solution, since this is now defined by x and y, or in terms of the x and y, so this is an example of a plane or a rectangular coordinate. So what we will do is to divide our analysis into two. So we have our x component. So for the x component, we're given x is equal to 3. And we are required now to solve for the velocity. And we know that the velocity is equal to the derivative of the position divided by time. In this case, we now solve vx is equal to the first derivative of x, or that is also equal to dx over t. So we now write dx is equal to the derivative of 3t with respect to time, and that's simply equal to 3 meters per second. So it's a positive value, meaning dx is towards the positive direction, in this case, to the right. So next we have y component, or the y Uh, y direction. So we are given y is equal to x squared divided by 10. So what we want to do is to solve for vy, which is simply equal to the derivative of y, or that's equal to dy over d in terms of our definition, which is position over time. So if we get now y, that's x squared over 10. So vy is now written as the derivative of x squared divided by 10 with respect to time. So since ang definition ng velocity is y with respect to time, pag derive natin ang x squared divided by 10, ang variable natin is x at wala tayong time na component. So meaning, if we are going to derive now y, this is now equivalent to dx over dy. So in that case, we now apply our chain rule. So by applying chain rule, we can now solve for vy simply as 2x, the derivative of x, times or the derivative of x, which is, which is 2x over 10, times derivative of x. Okay? So, yung 2x over 10, yung derivative no y yun. Yung x natin is dx over dt. And we have solved already the derivative of x. So, we could substitute this now. So, we'll have 2 over 10. x is equal to 3t. So, substitute ko dito. And then we were able to compute for x dot as 3. So substitute. So meaning, vy now, in terms of time, the derivative of y in terms of time is equal to 1.8t. Okay? So at 2 seconds, we just substitute 2 to the value of time. 
So, Vx is constant, 3 meters per second to the right. And for Vy, that is now 3.6 meters per second upwards. So, 1.8 times 2. Okay? So, for our magnitude of the velocity, that will simply be taken through Pythagorean theorem. So, we have V is now equal to the square root of Vx 3 squared plus Vy 3.6 squared which will give us now the velocity of the particle at 2 seconds equal to 4.383 meters per second. And then, for the direction of our velocity, that will now be taken as the arc tangent of Vy over Vx. Substituting, that will now be inverse tangent of 3.6 divided by 3, giving us a value of 50.2 degrees. Okay? So we're not yet finished. This is just the solution of our velocity. So we now move to the acceleration. So for the acceleration, again, we divide our analysis into two. So we start off first with x component. So we were able to solve for vx equal to 3 meters per second. And we know that a is equal to the derivative of v, which is dv over dt. Solving now, the derivative of 3, which is a constant value, is equivalent to 0. So meaning there's no acceleration along the x direction. And then next, we have your y component. We have solved that the y component is given by 2x times the derivative of x over 10. And then that vy is equal to, or ay is equal to the derivative of dy, and that's equal to dvy over dt. So, solving now, 2x derivative of x over 10, applying chain rule, that will now be 2x, or 2 times the derivative of x times derivative of x over 10, plus 2 times x times the second derivative of x divided by 10. So, para hindi na tayo mahirapan, simplify yung equation na to. Remember that we were able to solve for Vy a while ago, which is 1.8t. So, ito na lang yung e-derive natin. So, Vy, dVy over dt, deriving na 1.8t, will give us the acceleration of y at 1.8 meters per second squared. Okay? So, kung meron na ito, dito na tayo. Pero kung wala ka pang na-simplify na ganito, na Vy, in terms of time, then you have to apply your chain rule again. Okay? So, we have computed now x and y components of the acceleration. Then, we can now solve for our a n acceleration in x and y during time 2 seconds. At time 2 seconds, the acceleration x is 0. Acceleration y is also 1.8 meters per second. So, meaning we have a constant acceleration vertical of our motion. So, from Ax and Ay for 2 seconds, we can now solve for our magnitude by Pythagorean theorem. So, we now get the acceleration at 2 seconds equal to 1.8 meters per second squared. Then, for our direction for acceleration, that is now theta A is equal to the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of Ay divided by Ax. So, substituting Ay and Ax, the tangent now or the direction of our acceleration at 2 seconds is at 90 degrees. So, let's solve another example. Number 2, a fishing boat attempts to cross the other side of a flowing river. The boat attempts to travel straight across the river, but the strength of the current pushes the boat downstream during its crossing. So as a result, the velocity of the boat has components in the x and y direction. So if the velocity of the boat relative to the shore is given by the equation v of boat is equal to 5i plus 2g in meters per second, and that the river is 100 meters wide, 
what is now the distance D, that the boat is pushed down stream during crossing. So we have this figure to help us in our analysis. So we have our x axis, x direction, and your y direction. So you have the boat here. So kung wala yung current, dw, the velocity or the movement of the boat will be straight here. So horizontal lang siya. But since there is now the effect of the flow of water, its speed now will be in dB. Okay? So hindi na siya horizontal, but it will now have horizontal and vertical components. So because of these components, instead of arriving at this point, it will be ar arriving at a point from a distance d to the point in which it was supposed to arrive. Okay, so ito yung magde-define ng ating motion. So we're given that the width of the river is 100. So we have d and then we have v b. We're given v b or the velocity of the boat is constant all throughout its crossing. We have the width of the river at 100 meters. So given these values now, what we want to do is to simply determine the components of the, or we want to solve for the components of our velocities from which we'll be able now to solve for the distance d. So for our solution, we again divide our solution in terms of the horizontal and vertical or x and y directions. So first, we solve for the time to cross the river. So what we are given is a horizontal distance. Okay? And then we are also given a horizontal component of the uh, what's this of the velocity. So from here, using now our x component, we can now solve dx is equal to dx over dt. So ang hinahanap natin is dt. So dx, dt is equal now to dx in which 5i dt is equal to dx. Or 5t is equal to 100 giving us a value of t equal to 20 seconds. Ma'am, bakit hindi nyo sinama si negative 2g? Because 2g is in terms of our vertical direction or your y-axis, 2g. Okay? So, in this solution, what we did was simply separate the horizontal or the x component and the y component. So, for time, for vx, ang gagamitin ko lang is the vx value which is i. Okay? So, next, we move on to the y direction or the y component. So we just simply substitute time, 20 seconds, in the velocity or y component of the velocity, which is now 2g. So 2g is equal to dy over dt, or that is 2 equal to dy, which is the change in position along the y-axis, divided by the time we have computed, 20 seconds. So therefore, the value of y or d in this case is equal to 40 meters. Okay, next example, 3. The courage shown in the figure has a vertical slot that is given or is driven in an oscillatory manner. The courage horizontal position is a function of time given by the equation x is equal to 3 sine 2. This courage is turn, in turn drives the motion of team A, so this one, team A, which is further constrained to move in a parabolic slot whose shape is described by the function y is equal to negative x squared. So in here, we want to determine the overall velocity of team A as a function of time. So take note. X and Y is in centimeters and T is in seconds. Okay. 
So, for our solution, so, before we solve, take note na pag min, ito yung imumove ko, yung courage na to. Pag numove ko yan, basically, the pin here will also move following the parabolic curve. Okay? So, in this case, we want to solve the velocity of A in terms of X and its Y components. So, to solve this, let us summarize the given. So, we are given X equal to 3 sine AB. We're also given Y equal to negative X squared. So, what we want to do is to solve for the velocity V. Okay? So, for our solution, we again divide our solution into the X and Y components. So, we know that velocity is equal to VXI plus VYJ. So, for VX, we know that VX is equal to DX over DT. Given X, we can, it's in terms of time. So, we can simply derive X now to give us VX. So, VX is equal now to 3, derivative of sine is cosine 2t times the constant of the inside variable, so times 2. That is 3 cosine of 2t times 2. Simplifying the equation now for the x component of the velocity is 6 cosine of 2t. So next, we move on to the y component. So for the y component, we know that dy is equal to dy over dt. Okay? So we're going to inspect the given equation for y, which is negative x squared. So ang makukuha natin dito will simply be dy over dx. Pag derive ko yung y equal to negative x squared, equivalent niyan is dy over dx. So, since ang kailangan ko is dy over dt, since the definition of velocity is y over d. So, ang gagawin natin, we apply chain rule by multiplying now dx over dt. Para mawala yung dx, ang matitira dy and dt. Okay? So, in doing that, let's derive now dy over dx. So, that is equal to negative 2x. And then, we were able to solve a while ago dx over dt. And that's 6 cosine 2t. So, we just substitute. That is now dy dx negative 2x times dx over dt, which is 6 cosine 2t. So, meron pa rin akong x dito. And then, but we need dy to be in terms of t. So, we just simply substitute x with this equation. So, expanding, we'll now have dy is equal to negative times 3 sine 2t times 6 cosine 2t. So, therefore, simplifying the component now or the equation of the y component of the velocity is now equal to negative 36 sine of 2t times cosine of 2t. So, we have computed already for vx and vy. But, it's not, but that is not our final answer because we want to solve the overall velocity. So, we apply now this equation. So, vx i plus vy g. That's equal now to 6 cosine of t i minus dy, which is 36 sine 2t cosine 2t times g. This will now be in terms of centimeters per second. So, ito yung final answer na. Okay? So, in terms of ij, kung hindi siya in terms of ij, then we could simply do a, the Pythagorean theorem. Kaya lang tayo, again, reminder lang before we move to the next problem. Kaya tayo nag-chain rule because 
one of the equations is not in terms of time, but instead it is in terms of the other variable. Okay? Pero kung ito, for example, is negative t squared, then no need to apply your chain rule. Okay? Our next example, we have number 4. A sock slides off the ramp with a horizontal velocity of 12 meters per second as shown in the figure. So if the height of the ramp is 6 meters from the floor, determine the time needed for the sock to strike the floor and the range R, range R wherein the socks will begin to pile up. So kung hindi siya under curvilinear motion, magda-drop lang yung sock natin. But since it's under curvilinear motion, it will now be following this path. So, this one now is an example of projectile motion. So, same analysis din lang, for example, 1, 2, and 3. We divide our analysis into x and y components. So, let's summarize first our given. We're given. Initial velocity, horizontal, is 12 meters per second. We're given y, which is 6 meters. Okay? So what we want to solve is the time it will fall and then the range r. So for our solution, start off with the horizontal motion. We know that horizontal motion, vix, is equal to vx since it's constant is equal to r divided by time. Pero, t and r are both unknown. So, meaning, we have to move to the vertical motion. So, for vertical motion, we are given y, and we're assuming that the initial velocity at this point is only consisting of the horizontal velocity, meaning viy is 0. So, given now y and then vi is 0 and we want to solve for the time, therefore, we will use the equation delta y is equal to vi y t plus 1 half g t squared. So, delta y, ang change in position natin is 6, pero it's moving downward, so it's negative 6, equal to 0 plus 1 half negative 9.81 meters per second squared times t squared. So solving now for time, we get a value of 1.11 seconds. And this value now is substituted to t in the equation of horizontal motion. So since we're given already vix or vx, which is 12 meters, that will simply be written as 12 meters per second is equal now to r divided by 1.11, or r now is equal to 13.3 meters. So, okay, that's it for curvilinear motion, for rectilinear, uh, rectangular coordinates, and projectile motion. So, for your references, you can check on the sites and the book of Hibbler Dynamics for the 14th edition. So, thank you for listening.